You're watching Fox 45 in Baltimore. Now live from TV Hill, this is Be More Lifestyle. Hey, what's up, Baltimore? It's me, Lady T, and this is Be More Lifestyle from Studio B at Fox Baltimore. Now, there's a lot going on right now, so let's get to it. Let me tell you. So, meteorologist Ashley Kramlick is here with us, along with our very own Tara Reeves and Persia Nicole from 92Q. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Hey, awesome. Hey, you guys. Oh, it's ladies night. We've got all the ladies in here. Okay. Let me get a little <laughs> dance. Come on, Ashley. <laughs> yes. Okay. Shoulders. Um, <laughs> well, it's good to have you guys all on today. Um, let's move on to our Let Me Tell You segment. So three NFL coaches, along with their teams, are now facing hefty fines for not wearing their masks during the games. Pete Carroll with the Seattle Seahawks, Kyle Shanahan with the San Francisco 49ers and Vic Fangio with the Denver Broncos will now have to pay a hundred thousand dollar fine. The teams are each facing a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine. The just over one million dollars punishment comes a week after a memo was sent to, sent to each team reinforcing requirements to wear coverings over their noses and their mouths. What do you guys think? Oh my goodness these large fines. Tara you want to go first? Sure, so I definitely see both sides. Of course, safety being of utmost importance. Mm -hmm. And these guys knew the deal in the email beforehand, choosing to take the mask off during the game. Right. But I also understand, you know, it's a timed thing. They have so many seconds before they have to snap the ball and be penalized. So they're trying to get to their quarterback, to their offensive line, what kind of play they're trying to call. Right. And that's somewhat difficult with the mask on. And also mm -hmm. in their defense, they're all tested before the game. That's true, they all that's have true. Negative COVID COVID That's test true. before they're able to hit the field. They're practicing together every week. So they're kind of in some sort of a bubble, an NFL bubble, if you will. The players are lining up. Okay. Within, like, well, hold on real quick. Let me get, one another let me get Persia line. and Ashley in here too. Uh, Persia, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, you agree? I understand, you know, it's hard to talk about plays mm -hmm. when you have the mask on, right? Because I'm over there yelling in a store like, I want a Sprite, a Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, too bad they can't be like the Baltimore Ravens because we would never do that. Ooh, you know? she said we are, we, are <laughs> well played. we are above it. Ashley, what do you think? I mean, I think it's a little bit more for show. I mean, obviously they're getting tested every so often and they're uh -huh. being very safe. And I think that they're doing this to kind of put people in their place. I don't mm. think that they are really causing any harm because they are getting tested. And I feel like this is one of the safest areas that you could be probably in the country because they are being so safe. Right, they are trying to be safe, but it's that's a that's a hefty cost though. Whoa, $1 billion. Okay, moving on to our next topic. Today marks the first day of fall. Now this begins to, um, you know, the, First, the part of the pandemic, okay? They're trying to make sure it's a uh, safe activities are being had. You can enjoy from your car. There's a leaf, um, let me see. There's like several new travel websites that you can um, go on to help track when the fall leaves reach their peak color, which is gonna be fun, you know? Um, so what do you guys think about that? Being able to track, you know, fall and the colors and stuff like that. I think it's gonna make for a good selfie. What do you think? <laughs> So for me, I didn't even know that leaf peeping was a thing. I heard a bird watching. <laughs> um, but hey, I'm right. here for it. I love a good selfie background, so I'm with it. <laughs> right. Okay, so you're with it. Okay, Tara, what do you think? I'm, I'm good with leaf peeping. I like to be in there, like going on walking trails, things like that. You can keep your mask on. You can still experience fall because it's fall because the temperatures start to drop, right? So be outside, be active. Of course, once again, staying mm -hmm. safe, but get your good group of girlfriends, go out, see some pumpkins, take some pictures. Social media is social distancing, so people can still enjoy your time on their phones. So love it. I like it. Love it. Ashley, tell I me mean, what I you agree. Think? I mean, the next several weeks are going to be probably the best weeks right mm -hmm. left of the year. I mean, you're going to be having the best temperatures. It's going to be feeling nice outside. Why not get outside and enjoy mm -hmm. the nice weather? I agree. I agree. The selfies are going to be so on point. Let me tell you this <laughs> fall, okay? 
okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, moving on to our next topic. A new survey shows 40% of pet owners would give up their dog for a month rather than ditch their phone. Now, an online SMS marketing platform called Simple Texting polled more than 1,000 smartphone users in the United States. The point was to see what sacrifices Americans were willing to make in order to keep using their devices. So ladies, tell me, are you willing to give up the dog or the phone? Tell me. <laughs> The dog had to go. I'm sorry. I love my dog Coco, but I mean, my phone, Ooh. no, like for a whole month? What would what? I do? What am I going to oh, do? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Poor Lassie. Uh, it, <laughs> Ashley, what do you think? I I love my dog. I mean, I guess mm -hmm. I, w I think I would keep my dog for a month, maybe wow. carry a computer around everywhere, trying to get Wi-Fi. I don't know how I would survive without my phone, but... I really do love my dog. So you get Aww. the computer mini laptop, not desktop, right? Yeah, right, Hopefully. exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. Tara, what do you think? <laughs> Um, I think so if it were just social media I could mm -hmm. definitely give up social media for a month over my little dog babies Aww. but I need to be able to communicate to my friends back home my mm -hmm. parents my brother sister-in-law so for one month I could do without the dogs because mm -hmm. I while I enjoy like letting them out feeding right. them they are a chore so I could give that <laughs> chore up for a month and still be able to keep in touch with family and friends <laughs> Wow yes, sure. okay sure. that was a that's a harsh one everybody's choosing their phones over the Oh man. I know. Wow, that's so sad. Don't well, tell thank the you. Dogs. I, I won't <laughs> tell them. I won't. Now, thank you, ladies, so much for joining us today. Now, we want you to tell it. Would you go without your dog or your phone for one month? Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote and let us know. Or go on the Fox 45 News app under Explore. You can find the spot to vote right there. At the end of the show, we'll see what everybody thinks. Also, a Baltimore area author set to release a new children's book soon. How a playful pup is helping teach kids valuable lessons to pause and think. And don't keep putting off that annual checkup. How women can take charge of their health right now. You're watching Be More Lifestyle. This segment is sponsored by GBMC Healthcare. There's no time like the present to take charge of your health. Dr. Priya Little is a family medicine physician with GBMC Health Partners Primary Care. Thank you for joining us, doctor. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. No problem. Well, okay, well, tell me, why should women make their health a priority? Well, I always like to say that health is wealth. You know, women put a lot of things for themselves, their family, their mm -hmm. careers. But if you don't have your health, you really can't take care of those things that you like to do, need to do every day. Mm, okay. So tell me, what steps can women take to improve their health? And why is it important for them to schedule their annual Well Woman visit? Yeah, so as always, nutrition and exercise are the number one things for your health. So the two things I like to stress for nutrition are that people need to strive for five fruits and vegetables every single day. So that's a fortune is just the size of your hand. So you want five of those either fruits and vegetables every day. And you really want to avoid sugary drinks like soda and juice. They're just empty calories and not good for you at all. And then exercise is really important. You want to be active and moving. And the American Heart Association recommends 150 minutes of exercise per week, so it's two and a half hours. So it's whatever way you can work it into your schedule. So if you want to be a weekend warrior and just do it on Saturday and Sunday, you can do it like that or stretch it out 30 minutes, five times a week. Any way is fine. And you want to find those like little things that you can do within your schedule to work on physical mm -hmm. activity. So you can park far away from your mm -hmm. office, so you can walk that distance, mm -hmm. take the stairs and things like that. Wow. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and then getting your annual checkup is really important too, because we can tell you um, what cancer screenings you might be doing for. For women, there are quite a few. Um, we do breast cancer screenings with mammography, pap smears for cervical cancer screening, and then colon cancer screening is also very important. So the doctor can tell you, depending on your age and risk factors, which ones you're doing. 
and also going for your annual checkup you can get whatever immunization and this year especially with the coronavirus pandemic it's very important to get your annual flu shot because right. there is a right. potential where you could get um, coronavirus and the flu at the same time and get really sick so you can prevent one of those you best do Right, right. We've been hearing a lot about the twin demic. Well, thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us today. Uh, we truly appreciate having you on the show. Sure. Thank you for having me again. All right. Start planning now for your retirement, no matter how far or close it is. The reason why you should have multiple streams of income. And children's books can often make your kids pause and think. And the series of books is by a local author when you can check out the new book for yourself up next. This is Be More Lifestyle. Welcome back. Well, a playful pup is showing kids the best ways to pause and think. Miranda Middleman is the author of the Pause and Think children's books. She's from the Baltimore area. Good morning, Miranda. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us. So tell us about your new book. My new book is called Pause and Think, Be mm -hmm. a Good Sport. And it actually releases a week from today. I'm so excited. This lesson is the fourth one in my Pause and Think series. And each book teaches a different lesson through the eyes of my buddy Weaver here. He's my rescue dog. Oh, well, we see we see the inspiration right there sitting right next to you. Uh, did I hear it's a special day for Weaver? A very special day for Weaver. Today is Weaver's fifth birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Weaver. Wait, how old is Weaver? Weaver turned five today. Oh, he turned five. OK, OK. Yeah. So now back to the book. What can kids expect to learn from your books? Each book and Facebook teaches a different valuable life lesson and in particular, called Be a Good Sport, is all about kindness, showing respect to others, supporting each other, and treating others the way you want to be treated. And this one, Weaver actually meets a brand new friend in this book, so we're excited for the new character. Oh, okay. Now, you're also partnering with the Maryland Book Bank. Tell us about that. So this quarter, I'm partnering with the Maryland Book Bank. Mm -hmm. um, we have a charity the quarter program, so a portion of the proceeds from Every Pause and Think book I sell goes to a different nonprofit each quarter. So the Maryland Book Bank is our charity of the quarter, and they're such a wonderful organization. They're local. They help provide books to students and teachers in the area, and it's especially important during these crazy times. So they're, they're doing wonderful work in the community, and I've been so honored to partner with them along with about 12 other charities so far. We've raised almost $8,000 so far. Wow, congrats. So where can we pick up the book and how do we get more info? So the books are available now for pre-order on my website, which is pauseandthinkbooks.com. But that's mm -hmm. spelled P-A-W-S, like puppy paws. Oh. And um, they'll be available at Barnes & Noble and Amazon as well. But I always encourage people to go to my website where they can get a signed copy from me. Oh, all right. Now, what are your future plans <laughs> after this book? to be many more Paul's and Think Books. We have so many great lessons to learn and mm -hmm. Weaver here is always helping me teach them. We go to schools together and mm -hmm. I'm hoping yeah. we can visit more schools. We've visited about 140 so far. Wow. And wow. Um, we plan to do a lot more schools in the future. Hopefully there'll be more Paul's and Think Books. And as we grow the company, I really hope to raise more money for different nonprofits all over the country. Oh, well, thank you for joining us and happy birthday, Weaver. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, don't forget, the virtual book launch party is happening next Tuesday at 6 on Facebook Live. And we can't wait to read the book. Thank you guys for having us. We appreciate it. Next, I'm going to toss it over to Amy. There's a sunny day for the first day of fall. Oh, I'm sorry. Meteorologist Ashley Kramlick enjoyed some time outside this morning at the Maryland Zoo. Hey, Ashley girl. Yes. Hey, Tiffany. It was a beautiful morning. I was hanging out with the penguins this morning and I want to show you this. Typically when I'm at the zoo, the penguins 
um, are usually swimming, but it was so cold this morning that none of the penguins were actually in the water. Temperatures were in the 40s here in Baltimore, but our outlying areas, some of us dropped to the 30s. Luckily, I am tracking a warm up. Let's talk about today, though. Today is officially the first day of fall that did occur at 930 this morning. This is when the sun beams directly on the equator, and it typically leads to equal amounts of daylight and darkness. Not the case for us. We'll see about 12 hours and eight minutes of daylight today. By September 25th, is when we'll see equal amounts of daylight and darkness. And then as we go into the next several months, we quickly lose that daylight. By December, we're looking at daylight hours less than 10. So for right now, temperatures are pretty nice and comfortable. We have warmed up to 65 here at BWI, 62 in Annapolis, 63 in DC. Temperatures right now are actually warmer than yesterday's high temperatures, and we will continue to rise over the next several hours. It's a great day to wash the car. Temperature around 70 by 2, and we rise to a high around 73 this afternoon. Really nothing stopping you in the way weather-wise, actually over the next several days. 80 for tomorrow, 80 once again on Thursday. We stay pretty warm heading into this upcoming weekend, but the biggest issue is going to be remnants of Beto. Could see some moisture rolling in as early as Sunday with more showers really approaching heading into the start of next week. This Be More Lifestyle segment is sponsored by ProStatus Financial. It's been said before that the three most important things in retirement are income, income, and income. Joining me now is Ryan Herbert, a financial planner and partner with ProStatus Financial Advisors Group, a Baltimore area firm that focuses on preparing people for a successful retirement. Ryan is also a popular radio show host. Now, Ryan, tell me, why is having income in retirement so important? I think that having income in retirement is extremely important to people because you want to make sure that no matter what happens in the stock market, you have exactly how much you need every single month. You wanna have that income stream be as reliable and predictable as your current paycheck. So no matter what happens, your lifestyle doesn't have to change in retirement. Now tell me, how does having a dependable income impact our lifestyle in retirement? Well, you want that income to be as dependable as possible because you don't want a market drop to affect your day-to-day -day living. You don't want that market fluctuation to change how much you can spend on clothes and how much you can spend on groceries and the things that you wanna do with your life, you wanna make sure that no matter what happens, you're gonna have the retirement that you've always wanted. Why do you believe that it's important to create multiple streams of income? So having different streams of income really comes into play in trying to be as tax efficient as possible because the overall goal when it comes to retirement is you want that income to be number one, reliable, and you wanna pay the least amount of taxes legally possible. No one ever wants to pay more than their fair share. How important is it to have a proper tax management strategy as well? Having that tax management strategy is almost as important as making sure you have those reliable streams of income because you wanna make sure that you are as tax efficient as possible when it comes to creating that retirement income. Nobody likes surprises, especially when it comes to your taxes. So when you're doing your taxes at the end of the year, you don't wanna have some big surprise because you weren't being as tax efficient as possible. And nobody wants to pay more than their fair share to Uncle Sam. Thank you, Ryan, for joining us today. We appreciate it. So for you at home, if you wanna learn more about creating a dependable income for your retirement, ProStatus Financial has a great offer for you right now for the first five callers with a portfolio of $500,000 or more. They're offering a complimentary retirement plan just for you. This will allow Ryan and his team to sit down with you personally and provide you with a roadmap analyzing where you are right now and discuss your best steps to really get ready for a successful retirement, a game plan to get you where you need to be. The number to call, 410-892-1221. Again, 410-892-1221. Time is running out for you to tell it. Would you give up your phone or your dog for a month? Let us know at foxbaltimore.com slash vote.
Welcome back. So we asked you, would you give up your phone or your dog for a month? An online SMS marketing platform called Simple Texting polled more than 1,000 smartphone users in the United States. Dogs did have a slight advantage over romance. 44% of the people surveyed said they go without seeing their partners for a month if they could keep their cell phones. Now we wanted you to tell it. Would you give up your dog or your phone for a month? Here are the results. So 59% said that they need their dog. Wow. See, man's best friend. <laughs> Well, we've got a great show lined up for tomorrow. Today marks the first day of fall, and we're making sure you're prepared. Lifestyle expert and entertainment host Josh McBride shares his fall essentials. That's tomorrow on Be More Lifestyle. Find out how to have your business featured on Be More Lifestyle. Email us at TV at foxbaltimore.com. So we had an amazing show today. I just want to once again say happy birthday, Weaver. He turned five today. That's amazing. Um, we had some amazing guests. And um, shout out to GBMC and all the other guests that we had on today. And thank you, listeners and viewers. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Remember to live, laugh, and love. Stay strong, Baltimore. We'll see you tomorrow.